Gospel of May the 17th, 2015, a reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Jesus said to his disciples, Go into the whole world and proclaim the gospel to every creature. Whoever believes and is baptized will be saved. Whoever does not believe will be condemned. These signs will accompany those who believe. In my name they will drive out demons, demons, and they will speak out they will speak new languages. They will pick up servants with their hands, and if they drink any deadly thing, it will not harm them. They will lie, they will lay hands on the sick, and they will recover. So then the Lord Jesus, after he spoke to them, was taken up into heaven, and took his seat at the right hand of God. But they went forth and preached everywhere, while the Lord worked with them, and confirmed the word through accompanying signs. Gods below the Lord, praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. It is again very convenient for us today that we take a peek of the first and the second reading. The first one is of course from the Acts. In the first book, Theophilus, I dealt with all that Jesus did and taught until the day he was taken up. After giving instructions through the Holy Spirit to the Apostles, he presented alive to them by many proofs after he had suffered. He enjoined them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father. You will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. As they were looking on, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him out, took him from their sight. Suddenly two men dressed in white garments stood beside them, and said, Men of Galilee, why are you standing there looking at the sky? This Jesus who has been taken up from you into heaven will return in the same way as you have seen him going into heaven. And let me see exactly what, where is the... This is from the letter of the, of the Ephesians from, from St. Paul. I, a prisoner of the Lord, urge you to live in a manner worthy with all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing one another through love, striving to, present the, to preserve the unity of the Spirit through the bond of peace. Grace was given to each of us according to the measure of Christ's gift. He gave some as apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors and teachers to equip the Holy Ones for the work of ministry building up the body of Christ, until we all attain the unity of faith and knowledge of the Son of God, to mature to manhood to the extent of the full stature of the full stature of Christ. So of course today we are celebrating the ascension of Christ into heaven. The Gospel speaks about it. The first reading of the Acts speaks about it. When he was resurrected, glorified, and afterwards ascended into heaven, something marvelous and incredible happened. For from that point on in time, there now resides in full right a human person in the midst of the Holy Trinity. Not even Adam, who was created and was able to speak to the Lord face to face, had had that incredible dignity, but especially that incredible joy of being in the Holy Trinity. The Lord ascended, glorified, and of that we have the witnesses, hundreds literally of witnesses, that testify to that, as Luke wrote in the Acts, in my first book, which was, of course, the Gospels, the Gospel, I wrote about everything about Jesus until he ascended to heaven. And he described it, how his disciples were staring up at the sky, seeing how he was being, going up and up, 
until he disappeared from their sight. And then the angels assured him, this same Jesus will come down again with all his glory. Now, since we have received this gift, there is also this reality, this great hope that as our brother has ascended into heaven, so too all of us baptized that might live that worthy life by the help and the aid of the Holy Spirit will be brought into the presence of God by the love of our Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And that brings us face to face to a compromise, to something that we have to do, for if we want to be and to go into heaven, we must accept the consequences. The consequences is that we are engaged in this manner of living as our free and loving response to the love of God who loved us first and called us into eternity out of pure love. So that is why Paul is writing, I am a prisoner for the Lord. I urge you to live in a manner worthy with all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing one another with love, striving to preserve the unity of the Spirit for the bond of peace. That is how we should live from now on, until by the love of our Father and the power of the Holy Spirit, by the grace of the Lord and the merits of His blood and passion and resurrection, we might be granted also to be in the presence of God for all eternity. Dear brothers, that is going to be accomplished not through our efforts. Certainly our, all our efforts are required. But the reason why we will be able to do that is not because of our own strength, but rather because of the strength of God whom we are going to receive. As a matter of fact, we have received it or rather Him, we have received Him when we were baptized. But we can receive, it again, receive Him again and again every time that we humbly ask our Father for His Holy Spirit. Next Sunday we will be celebrating Pentecost. Let us start all this week to think about this gift, the third person of the Holy Trinity. And let us humbly ask our Father in Heaven in the name of His Son Jesus, that he might grant us and all his children to the presence of his Holy Spirit. Until we meet in heaven, God bless you all, brothers.